For the last several months or so, I have been struggling with putting an idea into a phrase that I think makes sense for the audience. Dion and I have talked about it a lot because I think we are both employees, not entrepreneurs. And thanks to Dr. Mike, who helped me see the you know the tree through the forest or whatnot, I now have this saying, and I want to see how Dion reacts. Dion, you ready for this? I am. So what I've come to believe now is we need to start articulating to folks who have a day job that their day job, their W-2, whatever you want to call it, is a key, not a prison. I think too many people wake up every day thinking, feeling that their day job is a prison, but it's really a key. How do you feel about all that? Well, there's, there's kind of two ways of looking at it. The first one is the response I get often when I talk about financial freedom. And I say that you can make work optional. We don't have to work until a, a retirement age. We can work until a retirement number. And I get a lot of clap back where people say, well, you can't do that without a job. Or it's very rare to do that without a job. There are people who just do the Christian and Cody multifamily strategy where they go out and they develop the relationships and do owner financing. And there is a way to do it, but it's it's not common, right? And, and, it, and it takes a certain skill set. So I say, of course, you have to work for a while, right? We start with that job. That's how we become bankable. It's how we get the loans. It's how we develop the credit history. And so the first part is, what is it for a while, right? Is it 40 hours a week for 40 years to retire on 40% of what you made? That's a while for most people. It's what most people end up with. And that's a lot less than 40% because they didn't invest along the way. But is it how long does it take me to invest to create the income so that I can make work optional? That's for a while. So that's the first way of looking at it. I, I completely agree. Instead of thinking, I'm stuck in my job, how do I escape? Which makes it really hard. It's it's thinking, how long am I in this job until the, the job creates assets that make the job optional? But the other way is there are people that we're never going to convince that their job is in prison and they're stuck in a... a um, very bad situation and and financial freedom sounds like winning the lottery like the only reason they can ever imagine not working is if they worked really hard for financial freedom so for those people i would look at it like you are in prison mm-hmm. and right now there are people in prison i was what's called um a uh, a drug court officer right i had meetings with people who were released on parole to try to make sure that they were on their feet their their car payment was being made the oil changes were getting done they were showing up for work right so not a parole officer but more of like a an influence in their life to to see if they can be successful. And when people are in prison, they actually have choices. Uh, there's There's a prison here in Washington where you can sit in your cell and waste your time for the whole time you're in there, or you can work for a furniture company in the prison, building furniture, creating furniture, prepping it for shipping, working in dispatch, right? Not driving the trucks, leaving the prison, but doing everything involved with that furniture company in the prison. And when you get out, instead of having four years incarcerated on your resume, you have four years working for and I won't name it, but that furniture company, you can make your time in prison productive so that when you get out, you're less likely to go back to prison. So for those people that feel trapped in their job, you're just stuck and you do view it like prison. What are you doing while you're locked up in that job to make sure that you don't have to come back? And so part of that is investing. Part of that is picking a strategy that is a hedge against inflation, that plans for inflation, that is diversified to protect the wealth once you had it. And so I agree with it shouldn't feel like a prison for the people that can have that mindset. But I, I think kind of like the housing crash bros, there's going to be people we just can't con- not convince, but um, change the way that they think. Right. So then we go, okay, well, so even if you expect a crash to come, my actions don't change. I still hunt for great deals every day. So if you feel like you're trapped in, in, in your job as a prison, at least be productive while you're trapped there. It's just, it. I think, that, I think, I don't know what it is yet. It just hit me yesterday, right? We talked at, I don't know what it was, eight o'clock yesterday. It hit me by two o'clock when I was thinking about it. I, there's something here. And and again, I, I we've been doing this together almost five years, right? We've, we've been doing this. Your job is the hardest one of all is to take people from the parking lot and get them into the stadium. Once they're there, it's a relatively simple process. But there's so many people in the parking lot. And I believe there's a larger, a large percentage that that see the thing that you and I used to get in the stadium, get to the stadium, get to the field, and they're looking at it ass backwards. That is, that hit me really hard yesterday. I don't, 
I don't know where this goes. I don't know if I change my mind in a month as I kick this around more and more. But I, if more and more people woke up every day and said, you know what? My day job is a key. I need to use this key for 10 years because I the, the dec it takes a decade. But every day you chip away with that, you're a day closer to it. Like you've always told me, right? You're going to be alive in 10 years, invest like it. So why do we act like it? Um, I just talked to Millennial Mike over the weekend, and it looks like he may beat you to financial freedom, right? You you ran it up in eight years. He might he might do it in seven. And let's just be honest, he is younger than both of us. So to get to financial freedom at his age and to have a couple of decades, I mean. It's right there for you. And again, the, these aren't high paying jobs. You just got to watch, watch your spending, create more disposable income, become elite, do these things and just let the momentum build, man. Your job is the key to everything you want. Stop acting like it's an anchor. So I'm glad you brought up Millennial Mike because I, I first I'm super excited about him reaching milestones and hitting you know hit the million dollar net worth and this financial freedom he's right on the cusp of that and so the biggest decision I think he's got left is what is financial freedom right mm -hmm. how what how what type of life does he want to live once he's not working in law enforcement so that'll kind of determine when that happens but Casey from Brick by Brick Wealth and me talked about this while you were gone is Millennial Mike started making his videos right? Years ago, right? Started before he invested. He said, look, I don't have anything right now. I'm going to show you the timeline of investing. Yep. So Casey and I were talking about if we started investing now, and this is where I think the problem with a lot of people thinking that their job is a prison and they want to escape it is you get the question too, right? How do I start now and be able to quit my job in six months or a year or maybe two years, right? And so if we look at the timeline, Casey and I, when we decided, okay, I'm going to start focusing on finances now, it was for her, it was 18 months. For me, it was two years yeah. to make one transaction. So if you're starting today, that means 2024, 2025, or right around the beginning of 2026, you take your first actionable step on yeah. investing. But in those two years, you mentioned this with Millennial Mike too. This is when you're working on your credit score. This is when you're working on increasing your income and decreasing your expenses, like all of those things that you could be doing along the way. Yeah. But have people thought, that the first transaction, if you started now today, could be two years from now. Because if this is this is not, all right, I've saved up hundreds of thousands of dollars. How do I deploy it? Like that's the person who started saving years ago. But right. the person who today is thinking, okay, what is my savings rate? And how can I increase that? Let me start saving now. Let me figure out what is my credit score and how do I increase that? That's a two-year starting point. I agree. I, I, I totally agree. That, that conversation with Millennial Mike really crystallized. I'm going to call it a step zero because again, some people can skip it based on where they're coming. But I really do think we have to create a, a, I don't know, step zero checklist. What are the five things you've got to know or do or work on? Because you're right. I think there's a lot more people like Casey and yourself who, who want it, who are doing the work. And that transaction is 18 to 24 months out, but we have to celebrate the journey and celebrate the, you know, the check marks. Then there are some people that come into this, like myself, who had 40 grand. It's like, okay, I've got the other things. Let's go, let's, you know, get the buy box, all this stuff. So definitely was self biased when I created the one, two, three. Um, so I think we have to work on step zero. Uh, it's, it's obvious to me now. I don't know why it took so long. I don't know. Sometimes it does. Uh, but I think, I think you, I think you've been right this whole time. Step zero is important. And well, for me, the, the thing that I think matters is the people who can't go out and just buy a property. Yeah. Don't they feel to productive. Feel like exactly. They got to feel like they're they're taking those steps. I totally agree. And if we could create that checklist, those five, eight, whatever they are, they could start checking them off. Right. That's why Dave Ramsey's, um, you know, seven steps is so powerful because everybody can look at that and and, and feel like they're making progress on one of the steps. And maybe we, we got to create, you know, the Dion seven or the Dion six or whatever they are and celebrate that as step zero. Um, right, the yeah. Foundation. So um, I actually have the six steps. The first one is, is, is the one that most of us focus on without even realizing it. And it starts for some of us, for you and me, it started around eight to 10, but for most people it's around 16 to 18, where they go out and get a job. Mm -hmm. What is your income? How do you make it more? How do you grow side hustles? 
What skill can you learn to be more attractive to your employer to get a raise or a promotion? Do you change companies for a bigger raise, right? All of those decisions happen for most people before they even think, okay, I, I should start investing and think about retirement, right? True. Then, then the credit score comes in. And those are things that you can be doing. And this is something like yourself. I think I'm a, an employee, not an entrepreneur. For sure. So when I started getting demoted into management and leadership positions at the CDL school, I, I got a lot of um, business theory training from the people who purchased it. They were, I don't want to say savants, right? But genius, borderline genius when it comes to running businesses. And they they mental dumped into me a bunch of business stuff. And one of those is, is really simple and you hear it all the time, but until you really process this through, you don't realize how powerful it is, is once something's measured, it can be improved. And so if it comes to something like someone's credit score, once they think about it and they think about the things that impact their credit score, it will improve. If you're not thinking about it, if you're not measuring it, you won't even realize the things that you're doing. If you don't know what a um, credit utilization percentage is, you won't realize that you're damaging your score by using your credit card for cash back. You could do that. Same thing with savings rate. If, if, if most people watching this right now would sit back and go, how much can I save every month? Most people have a fuzzy answer. I don't know. It's what's left. I could probably do this or I'll, the majority of the questions, the answers when I ask people that question is I can't. I don't make enough to save. Well, figure out a, a number. It could be $1. If, if every month you could take $1, put it somewhere that you don't touch. Now it's measured. Now you can improve it. What would it take to double that? What would it take to turn it into five or ten dollars? And then you start playing those games of these subscriptions equal this much, mm -hmm. this extra expense, this little bit of overtime, or this little bit of side hustle can equal an amount. And now, since it's measurable, it can be increased. And for me, those first two years, where I, I often get asked the question, you know, how did you stay motivated when it took you two years to find your deal? I was like. I got to see a positive amount in the bank. Yeah. It's and watch it's, like it hit a comma club. There was a comma club happening in there at one point. And uh those are exciting things. And before you're even like um, I, I've learned my market, I've learned figured out which asset class I'm going to invest in. And uh those are the things in, in line with this video that can make your job yeah. the path to reaching financial freedom. I, I agree with you that for a lot of people, and dare I say probably most people, step zero is going to be leaning on the job. And maybe it's like you said early on, it's like, how can I get more out of my job, right? A bonus, a, you know, trade jobs or whatever it is, but also, you know, the credit, it's just all of those things that I may be glossed over. They are critically important. And, um, you know, Millennial Mike really highlighted the yesterday. You've been educating me on that for a couple of years and now I get it. So we're definitely going to be talking about step zero a lot more. But at the end of the day, folks, trust me, you need to look at your job different. If you wake up every day miserable, if you just change it to um, it's it's the key, not the prison, you're going to feel better. You've got to believe it. You've got to work at it. You've got to make those positive steps, but it's right there for you. And if it truly is a prison to you, it's a, you know, quit, go do something else. I mean, if it's really that bad, um, any kind of closing thoughts on this? Well, I mean, I do like the phrase, you're going to be alive in five or 10 years, you should start investing like it. But if you're going to be alive in five or 10 years, do you want to still be in the prison complaining about it? Exactly. <laughs> or do you want to see the well, progress? 40 years is a long time. <laughs> it's a long time to be in prison. And then you get out on parole and you got 40%. No, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. If you, one way or other, you're in prison. You either you work to get out in 10 years or... Um, you do it for 40 years. So Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I do my live streams every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much.